years in the White House, the United States presidency is one of the most demanding jobs in the world, and one person above all is responsible for making sure the man in office is fit for the job, the White House doctor, Dr. Connie Mariano. She served in the White House for nine years, acting as a personal physician to President George H.W. Bush. President Clinton and George W. Bush. Her new book is out now. It's called The White House Doctor, and she joins us. Welcome, Doctor. Good morning. Well, uh, Doctor, you also point out some of the great stories in your book, one of which is you don't want to just take care of the presidents. If a tourist goes down, you've got to take care of the tourists, too, correct? If a staffer goes down, Absolutely. you're there with your stethoscope, including an 8-year-old that went down one time, and you had to go and make sure she was, she was okay, and they couldn't believe that you were a doctor, not a nurse. That's true. A lot of times when you show up, the, you're a woman, they figure, oh, you must be the nurse, not the doctor. So you just do your job and say, I was a doctor, I just do my job and be quiet about it. You know, in your uh, book, you talk about, for example, getting this job, the first female doctor, first Filipino. And talk about your, uh, your interaction with Bush 41. Was he, was he healthy? He was. He was in great shape. Actually, I jogged behind him one time in Kentucky. Um, who's always on the go. In fact, the presidency really is, a, is like a stress test for most of these people. They get up early in the morning, they're nonstop, and then, uh, and then late at night they, they head to, uh, back to their, uh, their rooms. But uh, just following them around is exhausting. I know, and there you were. There was just a shot of you. I don't know if you could see it, but that was you jogging with the president. Then, of course, after Bush 41 comes uh, Bill Clinton, the 42nd president of the United States. I understand he was a challenge. With uh, the time he slept, he liked to work a little bit late, and one for the fast food. He was always on the go, and he was also predictably unpredictable, which caused us to change the way the medical unit did business. Uh, we went to 24-hour, uh, seven days a week, on-site medical care because of him, and actually got the medical unit to be better. You had one uh, personal moment, because you, you, uh, by all accounts, by reading your book, you really liked Bill Clinton, uh, very likable, and that's the way you felt about him. But you also were told by the courts, by Ken Starr, Go take some blood with the whole Monica Lewinsky scandal. How stressful was that for you? What was going through your mind when you did it? It was a very sad time. Um, I believed in the president all along, and I thought uh, this was sort of a conspiracy set up. Like a lot of us who were around him didn't believe all the rumors, and I was sort of shocked that Ken Starr ordered me to, to draw the blood. But because I was a, a military officer at that time uh, and assigned to the White House, I had to follow through the orders and draw uh, Bill Clinton's blood that uh, connected him to Monica Lewinsky. And you, at that time, what was his reaction when you did it? Because here you are, you're tight, you're friendly, and you're doing something that somebody yeah. else mandated. It was difficult. He actually came down from the state dining room, uh, the state floor event. We were in the map room of the White House right next door to my office on the ground floor of the White House. And I was surprised. He was at, rather matter of fact. Uh, he put his arm out, looked at me, looked at the people in the room, said, go ahead, Doc, do your job. Uh, doctor, he looks markedly di uh, different than he used to. I mean, he, after he had the heart trouble, he seemed to change his diet uh, in a big way. Was that a relief for you? Were you predicting, and sadly, something else was going to happen because something had to give between his high-octane life and his high-octane food? We, uh, when we tested him every year, we did exercise stress echocardiograms on him every year at Bethesda. He passed all his tests, but he had risk factors. He was, uh, you know, being a middle-aged male who uh, was, uh, had high cholesterol diet, uh, type A personality, he was at risk. I was just grateful he got the surgery and has survived it and has done very well since then. Right, and Bush 43, you didn't have him for long, but you did notice his fitness level was through the roof. He was, I think, among all our presidents, the healthiest president, had a resting heart rate of about 43, 44, which is what you see in athletes. <laughs> yeah. Very active. I recall his blood work was very good. He was in good shape. Dr. Connie Mariano, uh, the book is excellent. Thanks so much for sharing your uh, up close, very Thank unique you. view. Uh, and you are a true American story. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you. Success story. Thanks so much. All right. 18